Hello, everyone. Welcome to our next webinar put on by CDC at one. This is uh, one that we've been looking forward to. It's always great when we see uh, testimonials of collaborations. So today uh, we're honored to have folks from LA Pierce and from ELAC, East Los Angeles College, and both in the Los Angeles uh, CCD. So from LA Pierce, we have Heather Kokorowski, and she's faculty there serving as instructional designer. And from ELAC, we have faculty members, uh, Mandy uh, Kronbeck and Alan Kosen. So they're gonna be sharing with you today. And again, it's, it's just been an honor for me to work with them in, uh, as they've established their poker programs. And now to he we'll hear from them on their collaborations together. Uh, just, uh, just some things to, uh, housekeeping, thank you, <laughs> housekeeping. Uh, we do have uh, both the chat and we have a Q&A. So if you have specific questions that you'd like to be addressed, drop it in the Q&A. Chat is for comments and whatnot. And we also will have uh, this recorded and made available. So I'm dropping the link to our uh, YouTube channel that has all of our webinars. And this will be the most recent one. So once it comes up, it'll be at the top of the list. And then also, uh, if, if anyone needs any confirmation that you have attended this webinar, then you can go ahead and email me at svalcarcel at cvc.edu. And then I'll return to you uh, an official email saying that this confirms you have attended. So uh, with that said, and again, the, the recording is already in process. And let me just double check if there was anything else I needed to discuss. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Also, uh, let me say one more thing, two more things. Uh, we do have the captions available. You can just click on the captions button if you would like to use that service. And then we will have polls, uh, a couple of polls here, uh, possibly one or two. And uh, if you happen to not see it, just click on the polls button that you see on your uh, toolbar, okay? So with that, I will go ahead and hand it over uh, to our presenters. Thank you, Sean. Um, so I will start. Um, again, my name is Heather Kokorowski, and I am the poker lead at Los Angeles Pierce College. And I'm also on the earth science faculty. So I teach oceanography, geology, and environmental science. And I got really excited about online course design when I put my oceanography class through the CBC Course Design Academy in 2018 and loved it so much that I then put another course through an oceanography lab class. And then it was 2020 and I was really happy before the pandemic to have an online lecture and lab class all ready to go. Um, so since then, we at Pierce have been working on establishing the local uh, poker program. We became poker certified in early 2021 and um, collaborated with our nine LACCD colleges to talk about how to start our local poker programs. And um, more recently, I've been working more closely with Mandy from ELAC, and she will talk about her part in the second half. Um, before we really get started, I think it would be helpful to do our first poll, which is just to ask why you're here. Um, the main reason that you're coming to this uh, webinar, and that will help us know um, kind of what to uh, focus on today. So there's one question coming up now. Have you collaborated with another campus in creating your local poker process? Yes or no? And then the second question will be coming up, I think, separately maybe or next. 
about why you're here. I'm sorry, I had just posted the the one, uh, the yes or no, and then I heard, I said, wait, she's asking for the second one. So it's okay, gonna... we can do both. <laughs> okay, let's see. It will allow me to... Yeah, it will, it will allow me to launch one at a time. Okay, well, we'll start with the first question. Okay. Have you collaborated? Looks like most have not, about a quarter have. That's actually pretty good. Okay, and Sean, do I end the poll? Um, oh. Yeah, if you have access to that, I'll, I'll leave that for you to do if you like. Okay, looks like the numbers are are staying about the same. So we're gonna end the poll, share the results. So the first question was just asking, um, have you collaborated? And it looks about a, like a quarter have. Um, and we're hoping um, kind of through going over the things that, that Mandy and I have done, um, that we can give ideas on how to collaborate, how to share resources and um, talk about your different approaches to establishing local poker. And now, Sean, I think you have to um, administer the second poll. So this is the one I was referring to first. So your, your main reason for being here, you're the poker lead at your campus, you're on the poker review team at your campus, but not the poker lead, or you're just interested in learning more about poker. And those are your only three choices. <laughs> Okay, give it another few seconds. Okay, looks like those are our results. All right, so it looks like pretty evenly poker leader on the poker review team and about a quarter just interested in learning more. Excellent, okay, thank you for that. So, Oops. There we go. Um, okay, so thank you for telling me or telling us where you're coming from. Um, so to kind of go back to poker at Pierce, um, we became poker certified in uh, 2021. And since then we've been building a poker team, you know, locally at Pierce and putting courses through our local poker process. So today I wanna show you some of the resources that we use and go over our process and what we have found that works. Um, we have certified 19 classes locally through poker, and we have a total of 28 courses that have been aligned. So we do have a good selection that were aligned at the state level, including two of my own courses um, before we started local poker. So we kind of established a lot of interest first um, and then brought the, the process locally to Pierce. So let me go ahead and share my screen and I'll just start sharing some resources here. Other, those are my kids. <laughs> okay. And also while I am talking, I'm gonna put you guys on my other screen. And if you have any questions, um, you can raise your hand or just put your questions in the chat. And then there's also that Q and A forum you can put um, questions into as well. So when we were first starting our local poker um, program at Pierce, um, we got together as uh, all nine LACCD campuses um, to talk about our different approaches. And I don't remember if I said this already, but as of right now, five of the nine campuses are local poker certified, which is great. Um, and we want to continue to work together to share resources. So when I was starting the program at Pierce, I started off by just creating a local poker resources shell and shared this with um, the sister colleges in our district. And this is kind of the central place where reviewers can go for updates on the program, the timeline, um, what's going on with funding, resources, um, et cetera. And if I just jump into the modules, I'll show you what's actually in here. So here, um, 
we met at the beginning of the term and went over the poker process. And this was a, a meeting with all the poker reviewers. At Pierce, we have a team of about 15 uh, uh, trained poker reviewers. And on a given term, usually about half are available for reviews. So every semester, not everybody participates. It depends on their availability. Um, so usually about half, we have like eight or nine reviewers who are active. And we've been pretty fortunate through COVID to be able to use COVID funds, um, her funds or what they became later, to offer stipends for faculty to participate in poker. So we've been using those stipends to pay reviewers and also to pay participants to um, submit their courses. Um, so we met with uh, as a poker review team with with anyone who was actively participating and went over the process of the review and then I provide the team with a recording for those who could not uh, participate and then here we just have um, a poker review Q&A so that our local poker review team can communicate with each other if they have any questions about the process that their um, uh, colleagues can help with and um, then some resources for their review and um, webinar recordings to help remind reviewers of their um, of the rubric items in case it's been a while since they took their training or been a while since they did their review. What I wanna showcase is a development in the last year um, where in the first couple of years of doing these reviews, it was challenging because I'm sure as many of you know, it, it's it's a lot of work to put your course through poker. And there were some um, expectations that were misaligned with the amount of work required. So some faculty were coming in not realizing how much work it would be. And we actually have ended up with a couple of courses that started the process and didn't finish. Um, and so in order to help manage expectations and prepare faculty for poker, um, I created this uh, poker prep course, and we've been doing this in the fall and then again in the spring, and it has been really successful. And the idea is to familiarize faculty who are interested in participating with the course design rubric so they know what reviewers will be looking for. And so they can get their course as ready as possible before putting it through the review. Um, and this spring, this has gone incredibly well because we were able to accept eight courses into our local poker program. Some of those are from faculty who have already participated. Um, so they're putting another course through. So we do a streamlined review in that case. Um, but I'll show you what is in this um, prep course. And basically, it's an outline of, you know, what poker is and the timeline. But the big deal is I created these um, webinar video quizzes. I don't know if any of you have, have used Canvas Studio or Yuja to create a graded video quiz but it's a tool that we can use to incentivize our students usually to watch videos and then they answer questions as they go through the video. And I am in love with using graded video quizzes for all my classes. Um, so I actually incorporated that model into this poker prep course. And I'll show you the first page, which is something that I did not create. This is from uh, Foothill College Online. And this is, you may have heard of this. This is their seven day accessibility challenge where they have a set of short accessibility um, videos that highlight the 10 main components of accessibility. So for this page, I just have participants watch the videos and then mark the page as done um, because some may not need to watch these videos if they're already um, trained in accessibility, for example. But then these, these webinars, um, basically I broke the rubric into pieces. And in the first one, um, this is a 25 minute video where I go over the first part of section A of the rubric with questions um, embedded into the video. And then the second part of section A, this one's the longest, it's 35 minutes. And then section C, or no, section B is 25 minutes. And then section um, C 
see. And yeah, there's no section D on the course review prep form. That's what I use as a model for these videos. Um, but within these videos, I also incorporate accessibility into all of those pieces. So these webinars, having all participants watch them is a much more effective model than just offering the webinars live, which is what I had been doing previously, because with everyone's schedules, not everyone participating can attend. And even if you provide the recording, you know, if you're given a, a one hour or an hour and a half recording of a webinar, you may or may not actually watch it. So this way, everyone is brought into one central place. They are led through watching the webinars in order. And as they're doing so, they are being led to complete the course review prep form that, that faculty use as they are um, getting their course ready to submit to poker. Jump back out to modules view. I hope I'm not going too fast. Everybody with me? Okay. All right. Um, and then in addition, so this is the required module that they have to do. So this is the, they have to watch each of these videos. And then you see as an assignment, I have the course review prep form that they submit. Um, and they are given the course review prep form at the very beginning. So let me just show you the welcome start here page. And this is where I would I orient um, faculty to the course review prep form, what it is, how they use it, and then the outline of this webinar of this uh, course uh, prep form, or the uh, what am I thinking of the poker prep course? That's it. Okay, and then in the second module there are just some optional resources. So when I first created this course, I just had the webinars as video quizzes, but then the participating faculty couldn't go back to the videos and just watch them. They would have to take the video quiz again. So I found that it was helpful to provide the videos here without the quiz embedded so that they can go back and review those as many times as they want. So in this module, I have those longer webinar recordings that go over the sections of the course review prep form. And then also these shorter videos. These were actually created by the poker lead at Long Beach City College, Michael Robertson. He actually is um, one of, was one of the presenters at our last um, poker norming session. And I found uh, a lot of his resources very helpful in incorporating them into this um, poker prep course. And I also reached out to Michael after he presented at the norming session and asked if he would share the wonderful um, Google site that he had created for Long Beach City College local poker. And he was gracious enough to share his site in a way that I could then edit it and make our own poker site. Um, so this is a new um, Google site that I created. So it's a public site, which is now posted on our Pierce webpage, um, where all faculty can now access all of the details about poker anytime. Usually our model is just to send out an email at the beginning of the term saying, hey, participate in poker, it's wonderful, it's great. And then all of the information had to be in that email, which is easy to miss, easy to lose, and hard to refer back to if you don't remember what the subject of the email was, for example. So this way, it's all in one central place. And here, I basically put um, all of our poker information with a special spotlight given to faculty who have aligned courses to poker. So this is also a great way to draw attention to the faculty who have poker aligned courses. And there are multiple pages here. I won't show you all of them, but I will share the URL so you can go to the site and take a look. I'm putting it into the chat now. That's the Google site. Um, and in this additional resources page, I actually do post the webinars um, also from the um, from the prep course. Not sure. Oh, it's just being slow, not opening. Um, so I went through that very quickly, um, but that's kind of the the gist of our resources. Um, 
the way our, our process generally works is really dependent on funding. So as I mentioned, we are using um, her funds or COVID relief funds currently to fund poker, but funding is really the biggest um, challenge because we actually kind of don't know if we're going to get funding until well into each term. So what I've been trying to do is get faculty into this poker prep course as soon as possible to get them started getting their courses ready. And then when we get funding, we are able to accept courses into poker for the poker review. Um, so if we could uh, secure funding either at the district level within LACCD or better yet at the state level, we would be able to have a much more efficient, effective and ongoing poker process. And I'm sure all of you who are poker leads, um, you are having similar issues with funding. I'm going to go ahead and stop share. I appear to be having some internet issues. Um, am I cutting out or can everybody hear me okay? Okay, good. It's just not loading, but I showed you what I needed to, so that was good. Um, so any questions about poker at Pierce or anything that I showed you? I'm just looking at the chat now. And one question came up about the prep course. Is it possibly in commons? Uh, it is not yet. I, I have been asked that before and I wanted to use it a little bit to make sure that it's set up uh, well enough to share. And I do feel now that I've used it for two terms, it's ready to share. So, so I would be happy to, to post it on the commons. I just haven't done it yet. So, so look for it. Um, maybe later today, I will post it. And probably the easiest way to find it is to search the commons for my last name, which is Kokorowski. And you'll see um, other course design resources and, and stuff that I posted there, but I'm, I'm happy to share that. And then you can take any pieces of it um, to develop into your own iteration of the poker prep course. Again, that has been massively successful in managing um, expectations and getting the courses further along before they actually start the official review. So a couple other questions. Curious about, Jennifer wanted to know the amount for um, stipends for reviewers and course authors. The amount generally varies because it depends on the source, but with the COVID relief funds, we were able to secure $1,000 for each person submitting their course. And then our uh, poker reviewers work in teams of two and generally they break up the review and they each get $1,000 as well. So that's $3,000 per course. So this spring, for example, we were able to get $18,000 which would fund six new courses. But because some of our submissions were repeat submissions, we were able to do a streamlined review with either only one reviewer or just me doing it as the poker lead. So we were able to stretch that into eight courses. But the general amount that we try to give is $1,000 each. And then a question about the Yuja, Yuja tools. I'm, I'm pronouncing that right. Mm -hmm. uh, what particular tools are you using? And this is Jody was impressed with their accessibility piece. So. I am not sure specifically what you're referring to, Jody, with the accessibility piece. Um, but in general, Yuja is one of the platforms that we have to, um, to host videos. And so if you have a recording, like a webinar or a lesson video, you upload it into Yuja within Canvas, and then you can caption it there. And then that's where you can also turn it into a graded video quiz. That said, I prefer Canvas Studio personally um, because I find it easier to use and easier to see the results of students, but it's the same process with Canvas Studio. You upload a video to it, caption it within Canvas Studio, you can add quiz questions, and then you administer at it as an assignment using an external tool in Canvas. All right, sounds good. Um, We're good for now from what I see. Okay, great. Well, 
Thank you. And I'll turn it over to Sean and Mandy. Hello, everyone. <laughs> there are so many great questions already in the chat that I've been seeing and great ideas. You know, I'm actually um, OER co-coordinator over at ELAC as well. And I think I will pursue what you guys were talking about. Um, Lauren Springer and Kelsey talking about using some of the ZTC funds. Uh, you know, for now, we were able to, um, to use some funds through the COVID block grant. Uh, but that's really great to think about for the future. Um, so to introduce myself, I am uh, Mandy Kronbeck. I teach at East Los Angeles College. Um, I've been there since 2010 in the English department. I've been using web enhancement since almost the beginning of my time at ELAC, starting with Moodle and just web enhancing my courses. And um, you know, DE wasn't very popular in my department until about 2018 when a colleague uh, really started getting it going for us. And I um, started co-chairing the English Online uh, Instruction Committee, which I think is our only committee uh, of the like at, on our campus. Um, Alan can correct me on that if I'm wrong. Um, but so uh, I've been teaching before since 2018 online with Canvas uh, before the pandemic had to deal with all of the uh, the lead up or all the 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 backlash I guess of folks having to learn Canvas and all of that. Um, anyway, so the history of poker at um, ELAC last May or last uh, about a year ago now. Um, Alan, our virtual campus coordinator, who's also here. Say hi, Alan. <laughs> Everybody, morning. And um, so I saw this call out for poker reviewers and decided, wow, that, that sounds really cool. Um, I'm going to apply. And so I did and, and uh, started the position over the summer. And then um, Alan asked me to step up as poker lead. Uh, starting this semester, um, this spring. So um, do you want to add anything to that, Alan? Yeah, I do. So before we start, I just want to say one thing, uh, the importance of having good colleagues. If you are a, a multi-district like us, nine colleges, it's imperative to have colleagues that you trust, that you get along with. So again, a big shout out to the district DE committee. I see some folks here. Um, and this is kind of why we were able to become locally poker certified because of the communication we meet every week. Uh, again, you know, big shout out to Pierce College as really the pioneer of leading the way for all nine colleges. So that's first and foremost. If you were a single district, find another college that you could feel that same sense of camaraderie and, and perhaps collaborate with that college. So we're very fortunate to have the nine colleges. And when I got into this position, I'm currently the director of the virtual campus. I'm also the chair of economics at East LA College. This was a very, very brand new type of what's poker, right? I, I, I know poker the game, but not the POCR. And so it took us about a good year, one year from January, 2022 to December, 2022 to become poker certified. Uh, we did put together a team of four poker specialists. Mandy is one of the four. We worked closely with Sean, so big shout out to Sean for the entire year. And sometimes I felt really bad having to email him constantly, getting replies, but we made it. So now the big question is, how do we then move forward with what we have? Uh, and to kind of piggyback what Bob Nash and Winnie Bass said in the chat, equity is a great way to kind of pin poker at your campuses. And I'm gonna kind of jump just a bit, just for a second here about funding. What we did at East Lake College was we just had our accreditation uh, about two months ago. And I made sure that I aligned poker with accreditation. So we were able to get the faculty buy-in where at our academic senate, they support poker courses, number one. At our union, uh, they too are also in support of, again, providing compensation to faculty who are teaching uh, certain types of modalities, training such as HyFlex, uh, and more importantly, we got the buy-in from administrators 
who really carries a purse. And as what Mandy alluded to, we have the COVID block grant. We were able to secure through our budget committee $100,000 for the academic school year for poker. And our college president, who I report to, uh, loves deliverables. So when I talked about how we could align accessibility and equity, which would be sections D and E in the poker rubric, that really sold um, you know, for him to support the whole project. We have today about 250 uh, distance education courses, uh, DE addendum passed through our curriculum committee. And our hope is, our goal is by 2025, we will get 50% of that poker certified. So that's something where we can show that there is again, this timeline of when we plan on getting to point A to point Z. Uh, and like what Mandy was talking about, uh, we are looking to build a poker team from four to hopefully 10. I know Pierce has 15. And again, this is kind of why Pierce rocks because they can pay their reviewer reviewee a thousand each. We're not there yet. Uh, we will be offering our poker reviewers reviewee 500 each. Uh, but that's kind of where, if you are thinking about funding, that's our approach, tying it to accreditation, equity, accessibility, and that has worked for us. All right. So, yeah. So, like Alan was saying, we we uh, procured funding for five hundred dollars. So, not quite as much as um, as Heather's as as Pierce, um, but I I'm pretty happy with what we're we're going to start with here. And um, yeah. So, I'm sorry. I had to to answer a call from my plumber while Alan was talking. So, I'm sorry if I'm repeating anything of course they come like right in the middle of you know because they always say like 11 to 3 right <laughs> uh, but uh so sorry if i'm repeating anything but uh basically yeah so we we've poker fied and my my colleague rick uh has coined that term feel free to use it uh three courses so far so that we can um you know become certified and we're so happy to be um doing that and uh, so this semester, you know, like I said, I started on as poker lead and was able to connect with Heather, um, which has been uh, just, she's just been an amazing resource. I mean, you see like what they're doing, you know, in just, uh, just a couple of years at Pierce. And um, I'm so happy to like have that to go on. Um, so we, um, as Alan said, we have five reviewers who took the, the training course. We have another one who is probably going to be becoming uh, uh, reviewed, like a, a reviewer as well. Um, you said you had 15, correct, Heather? That's that's like life goals right there. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully like in a year or two, we'll be in the same place. Um, so we we met and we she's been just so so great with um showing us their process. So this is the most recent thing that we've sort of uh, come up with here and sort of based on how a little bit on how Pierce does it um we came in came up with our own little sort of poker process timeline. And so since our funding is uh not necessarily tied to being every semester uh we you know we have this block grant at least for the next year or two uh so hopefully we'll be able to be give people a little bit more leeway in the dates of completion although i'm taking all of the lessons that into consideration that um heather talks about with um you know, having to like hurry up and help people finish at the end of the semester with their courses. And um, so what what we're hoping to do is, you know, go through these steps. So we're we're going to be people will meet with us first, right, with a poker lead. And I want to work with them to plan out a timeline that fits with their schedule. Uh, and then they'll complete that wonderful poker prep course that I have plans to modify over the summer 
um, for for our purposes for our campus. So I'm hoping you know give them about a week or so to do that. And this is just suggestions um, of the time that it might take. Um, and you guys are you can feel free to put in the chat any feedback on this because maybe some of you have been through this process more than I have at this point. So um, if you're like, oh, that's that's not going to work, I am so um, willing to to hear feedback on this. So the idea is that you know they would submit a couple of modules, receive feedback from a poker lead, and uh, resubmit the module with corrections, of course. And then, uh, then I would assign him, assign uh, reviewers to that participant, and um, then they would receive their feedback. And I figure with our sort of lower stipend of five hundred, that this seems like a better um, workload for the poker reviewers as well. And so that's that's our timeline. And we're we're still sort of talking about, you know, how are we going to handle the um the stipends and um, you know, how are we going to are we gonna have them sign an agreement on the date of completion? See, I already had a little question here asked Heather. We talked about it this morning. Uh, but yeah, so Alan and I need to sort of hammer that out. But it's it's a work in progress, you know. We are also looking to have a summer boot camp and um, hoping to get the okay from Alan today after he meets with our college president. <laughs> um, and we're going to start offering those those stipends, right? So we're thinking, you know, that we're gonna do about four weeks. And what I really want out of this uh boot camp is, of course, finished product. So there's going to be that deliverable at the end of a completed poker-fied course. And so I'm hoping that this really gives us a nice head start. We have been keeping track of the uh, people who are interested in poker, but just haven't had the time yet, because as you all know, it's a huge commitment. It's 30 to 40 hours, you know, um, according to the CVC, right? Um, and so we're hoping to reach out to those folks first and um, yeah, get some courses poker five uh, uh, aside from the first three that we have. Yeah, um, I don't I don't know if I really want to show too much more because like I, I feel like we have so much to to work on still compared to what uh what Pierce has done. But this is our our basic little uh canvas shell that we enroll folks in and you know it's just very basic right now. But um at least it it has something. It takes them to, through the steps. Um and this section is for the reviewers. But um yeah so we've taken some of the wording that Pierce had in their course and um, yeah, we're able to put it together and have some uh, resources for folks to, to use as they start the process. So yeah, I think that's that's mainly, mainly it on my end, um, unless anybody has questions. And Mandy, if I may, um, I do wanna emphasize the importance of having poker all year round as opposed to nine months, and for you know East Lake College, we are able to provide the poker stipend uh, to the reviewers, reviewees, all 12 months. Because again, to me, if I'm, I'm I'm a faculty myself, and the time that I have to really use to to really hammer out sections A through E will be the summertime. And so having poker reviewers, poker leads, uh, be compensated during the summer is imperative in getting it done. Right, exactly, and that's sort of the point of offering a um, a summer boot camp, mm -hmm. right? And right. I actually have folks who I started working with this semester, and are they're just you know struggling to get through it because the semester gets busy. You guys know that, like especially towards the end here in May. Uh, so I'm sort of hoping that if we can get them through say those first five steps with a poker lead and then you know in the winter or summer I can assign them uh you know poker reviewers and that that might be a model that works there might be some folks who uh do just fine during the semester as well um uh, but yeah the idea is to allow folks that the plenty of time to um to get done with the course 
right? And I do want to, again, emphasize the importance of that triangle um, institutions within the college. So if you can get your academic senate to support the poker process and to have the union back up uh, the poker process through the compensation aspect, that is re really gonna force administration to really cave in and agree. And again, tying it with accreditation, that to me has been the key at, at East LA College. Absolutely. And, uh, oh, I did also want to mention that uh, Heather was gracious enough to pass on their uh, Google site that that you got from Long Beach, was it, right, Heather? Uh, and so we'll be, we'll be uh, recreating that for ELAC as well. Yeah. Any, any questions? Any questions about, like, how we've collaborated with one another and... Um, you know, sort of how we've connected and that sort of thing. If not, um, my site decided to load now so I could show you what I was trying to show you at the end of my spiel. Um, so let me just, we'll, we'll watch the chat for questions. So do put those thoughts in the chat. Um, but just to go back to uh, the Google site and also, incentivizing poker. Um, this is the what are the benefits page of our poker uh, site. And this is the part that piggybacking on what Alan was saying about accreditation and equity funding and getting buy-in. Um, there really are measurable benefits of poker that poker aligned courses increase student success rates which is pretty huge. And that's where at Pierce, we're starting to, as Wendy Bass mentioned in the chat, we are trying to pursue equity funds to have a more consistent source of funding for poker. Because if a student has a bad experience in an online class, they might not only not pass that class, but they might drop out of college and not have equal access to education um, if that course is not designed well, if it's not accessible, if it's hard to follow, if they don't have any contact with the instructor. And that's what's so great about poker quality reviewed classes is all of that, as we know, is built into the classes. And we have the um, initial um, data from Shafee College that revealed that 14% increase in course success rates after poker alignment, which is very significant. Um, and we are also trying to get data local, locally at peers for our classes um, to show that increase in success rates. And um, we also have a badging system. So we know that, that the courses get badged at the state level with the online course exchange, the CDC um, online course exchange. But we at Pierce now, actually within L all of LACCD, have now a local badging system in our course schedules that we're still in the process of figuring out how to administer it. But in our local course schedules, there will be a little badge that says quality reviewed. And then the next step, of course, is to help students know what that means. If they see quality reviewed on a class, what exactly can they expect from that class? So we're still building that um, relationship or that um, reputation of poker among students as well. Um, and then of course, you know, student testimonials, it's not solid data, but it definitely, the comments that we get through the anonymous course surveys um, say a lot about how well the courses are organized, how they feel like they're part of a community, they feel supported. Um, so if we can really embrace these benefits and take them to, you know, the stakeholders who can provide funding. Um, I think that's where we need to go with um, funding for poker. Um, let's see. That's the point I wanted to make about funding. Any questions or anything else you want me to show you here? I'm just looking at the chat. Okay, questions about the process. There seems to be a couple of questions about how the reviewer, actually how the review happens. So one thing I haven't showed you yet is our, our tracking sheet. Um, so 
when reviewers are going to review a course, I set up this course review tracking sheet for each course. And the course design tracker, um, uh, Michael Robertson, again, at Long Beach City College updated the previous version that a lot of people were using um, to have active links to the course, uh, to the uh, resources for each rubric item. So if you click on it, it takes you to the CVC resource that tells you what that rubric item is. So we have adopted that updated course design tracker. And I basically just um, uh, revised um, the Long Beach template into one that works for us because we have instructors, as I mentioned, work in teams of two, um, but they break it up. And so there's just one column for reviewer feedback. So the reviewer would go through and review the course and leave their feedback in this column. And then once the review is complete, they mark up here, these are the drop down menus that say whether it's complete or incomplete or aligned. And then they share this course design tracker with their faculty member, the course designer um, or the course author. And then the course author makes comments here. And they use this as an active document um, to carry them through the review over the course of the several weeks um, towards the end of the term. And then I come in at the end and kind of double check, you know, as the poker lead, um, as, you know, kind of norming all of our local poker reviews to make sure that, you know, everything is aligned to the same level. And oftentimes there are little things that need attention um, towards the end, but that's generally um, our process. And I have a link to this that I can share with you. And I actually made a copy of this. Um, this is just a Google Doc. So I made a copy. And if you want to use it, just make sure that you make a copy of the copy. So I'll, I'll go ahead and share that um, and stop sharing so that we can answer additional questions. Yeah, we had come up with a question for you all, um, if we want to sort of bring that up. Uh, basically, how do you envision collaborating with a nearby or sister college or for like the quarter of you who already have maybe you can talk about talk in the chat about you know what you've done how have you collaborated with other colleges um and what can we learn from you too you know And at this point, we can also open it up if, if you want to, um, if you want to talk and unmute, uh, we could just go by raising hands. You can use the, the reactions function and uh, get in the queue if anyone is uh, interested in uh, asking some questions or commenting. And don't be shy. <laughs> okay, so we have Tor. Go ahead, Tor. Hi there. Uh, thank you for the presentation, Tor Lacey, Cerritos College, Earth Science Department as well, Heather. Um, I'm wondering if you've uh, encountered any resistance from faculty regarding the notion of having courses quality certified because if their course is not quality certified, maybe there's some component of competition that they would uh, resist. Well, at, at East, you know, I've heard just tiny rumblings, you know, here and there um, in my own department, you know, sort of mentioning it last semester. But, you know, maybe Alan could speak more to this also, if he's heard any sort of resistance like you know uh throughout the campus but fortunately not too much yet yeah if i may from my from my experience on campus i have not heard of any rumblings at all about competition in fact the departments that i have worked with in helping their courses become de and did certified through the curriculum committee uh they're, they're really all for it uh, one of my biggest allies at East LA College are the chairs, the chairs council. 
And so if he can get the buy-in from the chairs, that simply disseminates information to all the faculty. Great news. Uh, thank you for sharing. And the course design tracker tracker is fantastic. That was super helpful for super helpful for us. So thank you for that. Can I ask how how it's been at Cerritos? We are just starting the process at Cerritos College. We're just doing our our first courses this semester. So uh, uh, as a faculty senator, um, I'm anticipating that that could be an issue, a little resistance if you have if you're. Uh, so, People may feel like you're pitting the quality courses against those that have not yet been certified, but uh, just uh, hopefully you know, that I, won't be the case. I can speak to my experience as um, OER co-coordinator as well at ELAC, and you know, like OER maybe it's slightly more contentious sometimes than um, than poker can be, but um, you know, I just take the approach of uh, letting people come to me and dealing with the problems as they come but um just sort of taking it slow and um you know as the popularity builds consensus will build as well at least that's the hope that I hold on to <laughs> I also want to add too that because uh, just piggybacks on Wendy beat me to it in the chat but um basically poker is open to anyone we make sure that you know funding isn't for any specific faculty member or any specific role. You know, it's open to adjuncts, it's open to full time, it's open to any discipline as long as we have funding. Um, so, because anybody has access to it, it's a choice, and therefore having the badge on the schedule offers more incentive for faculty to go through the rigorous process. You know, you have to get DE certified to teach online, but as we know, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that your course is going to be accessible or going to have a lot of interaction and taking it to the next level and earning that badge, you know, really, really offers more incentive um, on top of the stipend, on top of increased student success in your class. Um, so, so that's where um, we, we don't see it as, um, you know, an equity issue among faculty because everybody has access to it. I just wanted to answer real quick, um, Leslie. Leslie, you're at uh, Trade Tech, as far as I remember. Yes. Um, yeah, and I, yeah, that's how it had how the ZTC and LTC badges have to be added, right? That at least in LACCD, the uh, department chairs have to add it to their add it to the notes in the galley, and then the, the schedulers are responsible for labeling. I'm I'm hoping that we could come up with a better system um, at LACCD because that puts a lot on the department chairs and a lot on us to try to make it happen, um, to make sure that it happens. Um, I mean, we've been we've been putting a note for each course that students would click on, and then they'd have to kind of go deep to find that note that the course yeah. has been approved. But I send out an email to the department chairs every semester reminding them these courses need the notes. These Now it's these courses will need the icons. And sometimes they do it and sometimes they don't. Right, right. So um, maybe we can start brainstorming more and collaborating more as a district um to sort of brainstorm how to how to how to fix that because I definitely see it as an issue um I, I thought I saw a hand up and I'm sorry it was Ingrid, Ingrid yeah, yeah. Hi. sorry about that <laughs> hey um I'm Ingrid Greenberg I'm the poker lead at San Diego College of Continuing Education and we're in our second year um and I agree with the presenters it takes a while um, to go through the at one training. And then um, we're, my question is about our faculty poker reviewers. How much, how did you do the norming process of your local poker review team? Um, because um, it just seems to be taking a while and that's okay because we're all learning together. Um, and did you kind of do a boot camp? We've been meeting on a monthly schedule and I'm starting to rethink that. Like we might need to do a deep dive and meet like weekly to do the uh, poker norming process so that we're kind of all on the same page when we're reviewing 
um, like a pilot course saying, okay, what do you guys think? Is this incomplete, aligned, or exemplary, this module? Um, and I'm curious if you um, kind of did a more immersive process instead of meeting monthly. Thank you. Heather, you want to speak to that? Because you've been through the process a little bit more. Yeah, sure. I wasn't sure. I thought my internet froze for a second. So that was my confused <laughs> look. <laughs> um, so we um, we don't generally meet as a poker review team, like all of us, the 15 of us. We generally, I try to meet with everyone who's participating that semester at the beginning of the term and just kind of touch base on the process. And that's where the webinar recording that I have from that meeting is now posted in case anyone can't make it to that. But in terms of um, reviewing the course, it's really just the team of two, right? That is reviewing the one course. And then if they have questions about whether something is aligned or ex exemplary, they'll reach out to me and I'll often meet with them. So I'm kind of the, the um, common denominator among all the individual teams um, so that we are interpreting the rubric um, you know, in the same consistent way. And that's why also in the end, I'll go in and check every course after they're reviewed. And all the comments on the tracking sheet helps so much to make that last check more efficient because I can see what they've looked at and what they found. And then it's easy for me to say, oh yeah, that means that's aligned. Or you know, that comment like, oh, that, that's not quite there yet. Um, so that's kind of how, how we approach it, really just one meeting a term and then individual meetings with teams as needed. And was that, was there another part to your question? Mm, you really answered it. That's super helpful that, so um, the, the time that the reviewers have their precious hours that they're devoting to this process are mo mostly devoted to actually doing the review, filling out that worksheet, the Google sheet you provided, and making those um, comments. And so um, their hours are directed toward actually reviewing and not necessarily doing monthly meetings. Yes, and that's where having a poker lead that has sufficient reassign time is so key to having the process work because I have 0.4 reassign time. So I have mm -hmm. the time dedicated to do all of the, um, you know, overseeing all of the reviews. And I also, you know, with the, with the um, course, with the poker prep course, helping faculty get their courses ready and going in and checking them and get it, helping them get as ready as they can before the review means that the review can be more streamlined as well. And so that's where, you know, the poker lead position is really key to having the successful program. Yeah, and you have sufficient reassigned time yeah. to meet with the pairs of reviewers and then maybe the Canvas course author as well. Um, yes. Okay, great. That's super helpful. Thank you, Heather. Yep, you're welcome. I thought I saw another yeah. hand. It was uh, Cheryl. Oh, I was just flapping my hand in the wind. I wanted to say this was very good. You guys are amazing. It's so gratifying to see that the Course Design Academy process is working with real people. And also, I just wanted to shout out to Ingrid that I'm your ID, so give me a call. We'll set up the capstone and get started. And the, the norming sessions will come naturally. And I think the most important thing Heather said right now was that building in this whole process with the faculty preparation is the key to most of my college's success for sure. So bravo. And we'll see some of you at the CCMS in a minute or two. Thanks. Thank you. All right, so uh, we will stop it at this point. I just dropped in the link to our YouTube channel. You'll see the video archive here. You have my email there. Um, Email me, even if you have questions, why not? Did I just open up a whole can of worms on that? But anyways, uh, it's, and I just wanna say, it, it's been an absolute honor to, I've, so many here that, that I've worked with and Cheryl and I, and working with Heather and Mandy and Alan with Pierce and Elac, 
it's just been such an awesome experience. I think I've been the one that's lucked out the most. I've learned so much. And I really do encourage all of you uh, to keep working together, make it work. We don't want any colleges to feel like I'm just left out on an island. Uh, you, you know, you all have each other. So um, yeah, we'll just uh, finish it off. Let's just give a round of applause to, to our presenters and we will uh, see you all very soon. Everyone have an awesome weekend. Thank, Thank you, you everybody for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.